guys, so game four of the Throne of Skulls tournament. Uh, going into this game 3-0, and uh, I had a great first day, won all three of my games. Uh, so got in on, on the morning of day two, went and checked the um, you know the, the matchups and, and, and the pairings, and I got put up against my friend Ben, who you may remember played Wood Elves in one of the practice games. So up on table one, um, that doesn't necessarily mean anything at uh, all the tables are random, but we find it quite funny that we were on table one, playing against Ben. We did consider swapping to find other opponents, but then we thought, nah, you know, sod it, we've been drawn against each other, let's just play, um, and, and we'll see how it goes. So, playing against one else again, rolled up uh, the spells, the level one gets final trans, um, which is actually really good. Um, I think I, I rolled that, uh, you know, quite often with my level one, I always seem to roll final trans. Um, I don't think I ever cast it though. Um, can't really swap to Searing Doom in this game because there's pretty much there's only one character in his entire army that actually has any armor, um, and other than that, there's like no armor in, in the army at all. Demon Prince gets Purple Sun, Doom and Darkness, Soul Blight, and the Crest Lanif. So don't have a whole lot of um, of Death Snipes. Um, I, I probably should have swapped Purple Sun. I, I for the life of me can't remember why I didn't. Um, there's like absolutely nothing at all in his army that Purple Sun's going to be useful against. Um, so a bit of a brain fart on my part there, but hey. Okay, so we rolled up meet and engagement for this scenario. Uh, I didn't get anything in reserve, so I just went ahead and deployed like this. You should know that this army by now. Got uh, Nova Gold Beast holding the right flank, followed by dogs. The block of Nova Warriors with the level 1 in. Demon Prince in the centre, just so I can pretty much fly to any anywhere on the board wherever he, he may end up deploying. Another Nova Gold Beast next to him. Over on the left, we've got another unit of dogs with the BSB behind. He's just going to push forward, keep the uh, keep the school crushes in check, and you know potentially stop the, the dogs from panicking so quickly, because there's going to be a lot of shooting in this game. School crushes, I'm just going to throw them up through those trees. I, I don't really care about dangerous terrain. Um, yeah, the, you know, I can't allow it to slow me down in this game it's going to be hard enough to catch him as it is and then way over on the left flank there there's another unit of five dogs so i i didn't get anything held in reserve at all i got everything deployed on which is good and i'm right up on the 12 inch line as you'd expect so ben goes ahead and deploys like this he gets um quite a few little units in, in, in reserve but he's put a unit glade guard on, on his left on my right and an eagle there behind the trees uh, unit 10 dryads uh, his big unit with all his points in, so I think it's like 18 Glade Guard with BSB and a level 4 in. Uh, the BSB has the Hail of Doom Arrow, uh, and the level 4 has got Spell Scroll and Moonstone, common setup. And over on the left here, he's got some more Dryads, another Eagle, and some more Glade Guard. Uh, I think uh, he rolled up in reserve two units of Glade Guard and his Eagle Noble, if, if I remember rightly. And after all deployment, he goes ahead and puts the, the way watchers behind my lines here. I'm not too bothered about them. There's nothing they can really kill him below. Uh, all the you know normal targets that they go for, the sort of characters and, and things. But mine are all you know mounted on on demonic mounts, so they're protected from the killing blow. Um, it's just going to be a thorn in my side that I'm going to have to either try and ignore or think of you know, you know a plan to deal with later on. So I'm in the roll to go first, so I go ahead and I, I push up my vanguards like this first, so unit of dogs push up there, and the two dogs on this side push up as well. <sighs> I mean, vanguarding dogs aren't great, I'm just hoping to close the gap and make him expend some arrows on these dogs. <clears throat> Every shot that goes into a dog is one less shot that's going to something important, like, like the warriors, who are actually really, really easy to chip away with mass arrow fire. Um, you know, if I get him close to the, the glade guard gun line, the those strength four bows will, will peel away warriors pretty damn fast, as we saw from the high elf game, um, in one of the practice games. You know, bow fire really can strip down warriors quite easily. So, master of um, turn one, push up the gold beast, push up the warriors, push up the demon prince right down his throat. I'm going to try and get Crest of Lanif working on his uh, on his characters. I need to try and pick up that level four as soon as possible. And on this side, so again, I just push the um, school crushers right up the trees, take no dangerous terrain, so my, my kind of 
gamble paid off a little bit there. BSB goes up as fast as he can. As you'd expect against Ward Elves, I'm just you know throwing everything down his throat. High toughness, high armor. Um, if I just get on him as quick as I can, his shooting's not going to have, have any kind of a chance. So in the magic phase, uh, nothing happens. I think I might cast Doom and Darkness, but I don't think I do. Um, he manages to either stop everything or I just fail to cast or, or whatever. No, basically, nothing of note happens. And I send a warrior's curse turn one. So Wood Elf's turn one. The so we watchers um, basically just follow my my advancing line. They're going to just try and kill him below on on the Gobby's chariot. We we found in the rulebook that even though you can't kill him below the specific target, if you roll a killing blow, it still ignores armor saves, which I didn't know about, and that's quite a nice little benefit to remember. So these way watchers on sixes actually ignore armor saves on on the gold beast and on the school crushers and things. So. Uh, he goes ahead and, and he uses his Moonstone to jump his um, his big unit away from the Demon Prince. Perhaps too early. I can't remember how close the Demon Prince was for his next turn charge. Um, whether he popped this too early or not, I don't know. They're actually in the woods, but because um, GW Trees at the actual Games Workshop store, they don't have the modular for, for whatever reason, so we couldn't take the trees off to put the unit in. So we just have to kind of fudge it a little bit. And the eagle flies up there to redirect the warriors. Dryads move up for the trees. And you can see there, um, one of his units of Glade shuffles around. And the other one has come on from um, from reserve. And if you notice, just behind the trees there, you see a pair of wings sticking out. His eagle noble has, has flown on as well. He's gonna, he's getting ready to start redirecting some stuff as well. Over on this side, the Dryads use their you know skirmish ability to basically conga line the way through the middle of the dogs and then reform again on the other side <clears throat> which I thought was you know, quite clever there from Ben um, the ability for skirmish to do things like that is, is really amazing and what he's also done is he's redirected the school crushers with the eagle uh, in a position where they're going to overrun hit my BSB and stop and then be a real easy flank charge for the um, for the desires onto the school crushers but I kind of spotted this as soon as he did it um, and I, I have a sort of counter plan to, to deal with this. So I'm just going to go for the eagle, get the points, and then initiate my counter strategy. And anyway, it's just at the top of the picture, his uh, other unit of Glade Guard has, has come on there. So he's going to pick up all those dogs, which is fine. That's what they're there for, just to die. So it's just a shot of, of a bit later, we shot the board. You can see how I'm. I've spread my battle line up really, really, really wide. It's kind of what you have to do against Wood Elf. You need to give them. Sort of zero space to, to run into. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pain, an absolute pain in the arse playing against them because you charge them, they flee. They've got so many units and, and played well. What else can just be absolutely devastating because you, you'll, you'll never catch them. In the magic phase, he goes and throws up Curse Vanra here on, on the warrior block. I let it go because I'm just not going to move them yet. I'm going to leave them there and let him deal with them. And if he wants to sort of expend time and effort you know, redirecting this unit that's fine um, I'm gonna let the demon prince the school crush and the BSB and the chariots do the work so I let Kurz van Rehoff go and I dispel a amber spear that was gonna pop the demon prince uh, my shooting from all the glitter units actually managed to put two wounds on, on the grubbish chariot which I thought was quite impressive uh, I'm not sure what the odds actually are on that but there you go they managed to chip two wounds off and of course, over on this side, the tunis of Glade Guard quite simply pick up the tunis of dogs there. No surprises there at all. So, Warriors Cast turn two. I go ahead and, as I as I said in the previous slide, I took the charge uh, on the eagle. Uh, I'm just going to pick up pick up those points, get rid of the redirector, and then, yeah. This chariot here manages to get a, a charge off on the on the Glade Guard. They can't flee because they can run off the board. It was a fairly long charge, but a power stance out a 10, I think I needed. Um, take another wound for standing shooting. Um, but that, that Gobi's chariot should quite easily mop up that unit. And then I'll just overrun off the table and come back on behind his lines, which is nice. Uh, there's no more charge to, to speak of because the um, the warriors are cursed under here, so I didn't want to move them and lose a third of the unit. Uh, the BS, the Demon Prince had, had nothing in his charge axe. He flies up, going to try and get the Death Snipe working again. <coughs> he's facing down his unit there 
over on this side so I go ahead and I move the BSB in this position so I'm right in front of the dryads and um, so when I, I, I kill the the eagle and, and inevitably get forced to overrun uh, the BSB should be stopping the um, the dryads from from reforming even with the shrink they, they shrink down slightly smaller um, it shouldn't be able to wheel past me and um, they can get in contact with the, the school crushes on the flank so uh, I'm pretty pretty confident that that's going to go nicely uh, and then I'll just charge him in the next turn um, unless he obviously reforms out of the way which he probably will so in the magic phase uh, again he manages to stop the death snipe um, but it does allow me to get doing darkness off on his big block the characters in and get a soul bite off onto the, the dryads there not a necessary spell I was just kind of throwing it out to try and pull some dice but but Ben's not stupid, he needs to stop the death snipe. <clears throat> Predictably in the combat phase, Gobby's turret wipes out the Grey God unit and is over off the table to there. And in 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 the in the combat phase over here, the school crushes just absolutely batter the eagle. Uh, and end up there. Over and a little bit further than than I, I thought they would actually. Uh, uh, oh no, I, I can't remember whether I rolled low or high. Okay, in what I've turn two, he goes ahead and he jumps out the um, out the characters from the unit, um, which is actually smart because it keep the spell stays on the unit and it means the general goes back up to leadership nine for his bubble. So a smart play there from Ben. Um, he's also getting out of the line of sight of the uh, the demon prince, so he realised he couldn't um, he couldn't get this this unit out of the charge arc of the demon prince, so he's just saving his characters. So again, really smart play here from Ben. Uh, way watchers, there's a unit way watchers in the trees. Uh, you can't see them, there's even way watchers there. They're just going to chip away at the Gobi's chariot that's turned around. Uh, the Gobi's chariot's turned around, can't really do anything. It's just trying to keep these way watchers at arm's length as much as possible. Um, but yeah, skirmishes are really annoying to try and fight against. And over here, so we, we kind of finagled this for, for quite a long time with the shrinking down and, and the wheeling. Uh, and when we actually figured it out, the way watchers, uh, the the way the dryads could make it past the BSB by like a millimeter. I mean, it would it couldn't have been more perfect for the dryads to just sneak past the 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 BSB and you know and, and wheel around. Um, I kind of misjudged how much they'd shrink down. Um, but either way, the, the dryads have got into the flank of the um of the school crushers. It's gonna be bunch of attacks of what 15 strength 4 attacks uh, and then yeah I mean the BSB is there but at best I'm probably going to lose this combat by 1 or 2 and then I'm on a 6 for the reroll going to be down to dice uh, which you know it's never a good place to be so I may end up losing the school crushes here just through sheer effort of not forethinking as much as I probably should have done so over on this side, he goes ahead, and my worries, my Nova worries, are how has now been triple redirected, you know, because of the Wood Elf laws there. So I've got an eagle, uh, a noble on an eagle, and a unit of of dryads all redirecting the the Nova worries there, which is just kind of insane, you know, that much effort being thrown into redirecting one unit. But hey, it's Wood Elves, it's what they do. Um. Other than that, nothing really moves up. Uh, the, the little unit of Glade Guard at the top there just push up a little bit, I think, to get into short range on the um, on the Demon Prince. Shooting from the Way Watchers, managed to ping two runes onto the oh, onto the Gobby's Chariot, which which is nice. And over in combat phase, so he does no wounds. My one up armor save really saves me. I kill one guy back, and I think the combat is a tie. If, if we just quickly work it out, charge flank. I have a banner and a wound, so yeah, the the combat was a tie, and I just reformed to face. So now those dryads are going to get absolutely butchered in in the next turn. There's absolutely nothing they can do about it. But again, smart by Ben, he pulls off that back dryad so that my BSB can't see him and and can't counter charge next turn. <coughs> Re really clever play. So at worst case turn three, Doom Prince goes ahead and charges the big unit of Grave Guard who ha still have um, Doom and Darkness on them. They fail their terror test and run off the board. 
because remember they were they were actually further back than they were in the photo they were in the trees and they weren't in front of the trees as the pictures would suggest but as I explained because they're non-modular trees so they fled off the table they only needed to roll like four inches and they were off the board so the imprint runs that unit off the table and then redirects into the unit of Gligard at the top of the picture so he's going to kill that unit Mass, massive chunk of points there collected by the Demon Prince as usual. Uh, this turn, without Curse of Honor here, I want to go ahead and, and charge the Eagle. Decide to start chipping away through some of these redirectors and, and picking up the points. This block and Ugle Warriors will mop up pretty much everything that, that, that's here, no problem. And over on this side, the Gobby's Chariot goes ahead and declares a charge on the Way Watchers and they just flee, as you'd expect. Uh, and I was, my arc wasn't enough that I could redirect into the other unit. Of, of uh, Weight Watchers. Over on this side, the Demon Prince, uh, the, Demon Prince the BSB just moves up around the Dryads. I'm going to you know, put some threat on those um, Glade Guard next turn. Even if I just make them double flee, there's a chance they might not rally, um, stop the shooting, you know, all, all this kind of stuff going on. In the Magic Phase, um, I go ahead and manage to get Doom and Darkness off on the Eagle Noble uh, and a Soul Blight off again on the um, on the, the dryads, um, I can't remember if I just had a, a massive phase or or what happened, but I managed to get the, these two spells off. Of course, in the combat phase, the Demon Prince easily mops up that unit of of Glade Guard between his attacks hitting on twos and um, and Thunder Stomp. Yeah, it was not a problem at all. And the Gobby's Chariots come back on this turn as well. And with the <coughs> Excuse me. With the skull crushers reforming to face the dryads, yeah, the, all those magical attacks at high strength just cut the um, cut the dryads to ribbons. I take no wounds again. Oh, I I, looks like I took a single wound on on one of the um, on one of the skull crushers. And of course, the eagle didn't stand a uh, hope of a chance against this many noble warriors, and it dies. Into World of Turn 3 then, he's just moving his characters around kind of this way, getting out of the, the charge arc of the Demon Prince. Uh, the Way Watchers have rallied and moved to there. And I'm not sure why I've showed this picture at the end of the end of the phase, but the um the Eagle Noble and the Dryads have I think they've both charged. If I I want to say that they have charged. Uh, why I took the picture at the end of the, the com the movement phase I, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that they got a double charge into the Warriors. These two units of uh, Goy Guard just move around, getting ready to double flee from the, from the BSB. Um, and luckily for them, if I charge with the, uh, the Skull Crushers first, they're going to be out of range for me to charge them again with the um, with the BSB. And if I charge with the BSB, they're going to be out of range for me to charge with the... Um, with the skull crushers, so either way, I can't force the these units to to go off the table. And Ben's position it so much that when he flees, he's not going to run off the table from one of them. So, you know, playing well to preserve these points here. Uh, in the combat phase, uh, no magic to speak of. But in the combat phase, I lo it looks like I lose one, <coughs> um, one Nurgle warrior, um, no wounds on on the wizard, um. And I kill like half the dryads. Uh, the dryads break, the noble BSB breaks, and I roll like an 11 and, and run them both down, which is just, just insane. The eagle noble at least should have got away with this swift stride, but no, these warriors absolutely, you know, men fucking business today and, and ran them both down. So, huge, another chunk of points picked up there. Warriors Curse turn 4, go ahead, and this is what I was talking about, so I charge with the, um, I thought, this is, it looks like I did manage to get double charge off, so I charge with the, with the Skull Crushers first, and that makes the unit flee for the other one, we redirect into the other unit, and they flee, BSB charges again, and makes another one bump for the other unit, um, and they end up way back there, in, in the top corner, because they've bounced through each other, but this means that, you know, if they fail to to rally next turn, they're straight off the board because they're like two or three just from the board edge, that unit at the top. And if the other one if you, uh, fails to rally, they're going to bounce through and go off the table anyway. So, 
relying on his leadership eight up there to save him, or well, leadership nine, because he has the, the musician in there, of course. Down here, so I couldn't get any charges off, he was made sure to be out of all my charge arcs quite successfully. Move the Demon Prince down here to kind of close the door a little bit on, on these two units um, and just kind of cover all bases as much as I possibly can. The movement on, on the Gobby's Chariots and then the Warriors is, is too low to really position them properly to catch these two characters, but we're going to see what I can do. Um, so obviously not much went on it in, in my turn 4. I think he, he does the Death's Knife again, which is really frustrating. Um, but in the what, what Elf turn 4, he goes and moves his BSP up like this, out of the Charge Arc of the Demon Prince. And the level 4 manages to march all the way over here and out of the Charge Arc of the Gobby's Chariot. <sighs> really hate single models. <coughs> really frustrating. Movement 10 as well. It's amazing for Elves. <coughs> so up in this top corner, one of his units um, fails to rally and runs off the board. Uh, and his other unit rallies. <coughs> you can tell it's getting, you know, towards the end of the game. This unit of Ray Watchers is still alive. He just moves it up, pulls it out of the trees, and, and puts it back down. Um, ready to stand them back up again in a minute, I, I presume. In the shooting phase, the, they don't do anything to the, um, to the Gubby's Chariot. So I thought that's, that's fine. And I think I've got to take a picture of his other unit of Way Watchers that didn't rally and fell off the table because they're not on the board anymore. So either my Gobby's Chariot charged them and ran them down, and I've got to take a picture of that, or they failed to rally from the first charge and um, ran off the board. I think the Gobby's Chariot ran them down with a long charge, though, if I remember rightly. So, Warriors Coast turn 5, I kind of just shuffle around like this, so there were Nova Warriors and the Gobbish Chariot are both looking at the level 4. Again, the Gobbish Chariot being movement 6, I just can't move it out of the way as far as I want it to be. I want it to be sort of 3 or 4 inches further back, but it doesn't have the movement to do it, so it's stuck there. And the Demon Prince has just shuffled around to look at the BSB, extend his charge arc as far as he possibly can. And try and death snipe him. Over on this side, the the Gobi's chariot should turn around to face this unit of of way watchers. And up at the top, the um, BSB goes ahead and charges his unit of Glade Guard. They stand and shoot, don't do any wounds, and I fail the charge. School crushers just shuffle around. They've not really got any any job to perform now. Um, there's no real big unit for them to just go and batter, so they're just gonna not die. Uh, in the magic phase, uh, go ahead and again fail to death snap the BSB. I'm like, are you kidding me? For real, bro? What is going on? You know, Demon Prince just phew, can't take his fingers out of his ears today. So, what else? Turn 5, he goes ahead and just, just for the heck of it, charges his uh, Ray Watchers into the, the Noble Gold Beast. I mean. It's getting towards the end of the game, not going to do anything. I'm going to charge him next turn anyway. He's thing, you know, hoping he can sneak two wounds through. Very unlikely, but hey, this is a gentleman's game at the end of the day. And again, he just marches up out the charge arc of the Demon Prince. And this is what I was talking about at the start of the game, where if Wood have played really well, you'll just never catch them. And it's so frustrating to, to, to play against. Um, normally what happens with a lot of armies is, you know, the Wood Elves just pick up 100, 200 points and then just do this for, for five turns uh, and, and we'll get really small wins. It's just so frustrating for your opponent to play against Wood Elves. And again, you, the level 4 just moves up out of the charge arc of pretty much everything. Um, yeah, what can I, not much to say about that photo. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so in the shooting phase, after uh, five turns of failed death sniping, the BSB pulls out his longbow, bang, puts an arrow in the Doom Prince's eye. I mean, I was just like, what? What the hell? <laughs> ah, Warhammer. Uh, over here, so the Waywatchers nearly do it. I, at this point, I was really rooting for the Waywatchers to, to pull this off. Uh, the, the game's well and truly won. I'm ahead by so many points. Um... So we, we were really rooting for, for the Waywatchers to come in and kill the Gobby's Chariot here. You get one wound on it, so close to pulling it off. 
Um, I think I kill like a guy back and the combat's a tie. So worst case turn six, go ahead and, and take the charge. Uh, this turn with the BSB again, it's a fairly another fairly long charge. He stands and shoots again. I take no wounds. BSB gets in. <coughs> the BSB should mop up that unit pretty handily. Um, it won't kill them more, but I've got a charge and a banner. Uh, I've got a bunch of high strength attacks. Uh, I should kill three or four, and then you know he's, he's on a steadfast eight test. Um, but either way, you never know. So I go ahead and I I can't remember if, if I managed to charge or not and fail or just turn to face the level four. But yeah, that's what that looks like. And the Demon Prince again turns to face the BSB. You're going to try and finish this duel once and for all. School Crushers just hanging out over there. So in the Magic Phase, the Demon Prince fails the Death Knife again. Common theme for this fucking game. Um, BSB kills, I think, five. Kills the entire back rank of, of Glade Guard. Um, he fails his Steadfast Eight and runs off the board. Um, so all that's left on the table at this point um, is his level four and his BSB because the um, the Gobi's chariot killed all killed and run down the um, the way watchers in the bottom corner. Um, so we just decided to call it here at the end of my turn six. We didn't play Wood Elf turn six. We just let it go and called it here. Went and got a drink. Um, sitting here now, I just realised I didn't say much about. Uh, Ben's magic. Uh, pretty much every turn he was trying to cast the Amber Spear on the Demon Prince and I just stopped it. Uh, and other than that, nothing else really went off. Um, he either re rolled really low or failed to cast. You know, he said one of those games with his magic. Whereas for the first few turns, I just boss magic. Uh, as you saw, I was casting two or three spells every time. But that's the end of the game. So going into looking at some, some post game thoughts. I mean, Warriors versus Wood Elf is such an unbalanced matchup. Warriors has got everything that Wood Elves hate: high armor, high toughness, speed, uh, and, and you know, great combat units. Um, and this, my Warriors army isn't even as bad as what you can have with Wood Elves. If I was running sort of chimeras that can just fly up over redirectors and it's so fast, you know, yeah, Wood Elves, uh, it's always going to be an uphill battle to to win this matchup against Warriors, particularly with the Demon Prince. However, you know, Wood Elves are just so annoying to play against. Uh, it, it's really a tactical challenge to try and catch Wood Elves. Almost as much as it is a tactical challenge to play Wood Elves and get out of the way of your opponent for as long as, as Ben did. Um, so, it, the, I mean, it was so annoying and kind of so one-sided that it made for a fun game. It was kind of a... We set it up at, at the start of the, the game we were talking about. It's going to be how long sort of, you know, Ben and his Wood Elf can survive for before the Warriors catch him. And that was sort of the theme of the game, and, and uh, we enjoyed it till that end. I mean, we couldn't believe we were drawing against each other. It, it, it was funny to, to read the pairings in the morning and, you know, see our names next to each other um, after he'd come down for, from uh, from Leeds to play. Known each other quite a while, always kind of think of friends. So it's, it's always um, good fun to be drawn against and someone you know. Particularly someone that, that you don't get to play much anymore. Um, and, and to that end, we just played a gentleman's game. Um, you know, no sort of rules for Naglin. We, we explored some of the intricacies of some of the more obscure rules in this game. Um, a couple of examples is when the, the Dryads charged the flank of the school crushers. There was a few little intricate grey area rules there that we just kind of talked about. And, and it, these kind of games are good where... the there was kind of no no pressure on the game. We were just having a good time. So we just, you know, we, we did some crazy things. We did some really delicate manoeuvres. Explored some of the more obscure rules. But, you know, it, it was good. I uh, managed to get the win again. And I'm going into game five, four and oh. So if I can pull out another win in game five, um, I could possibly end up winning best Warriors. Maybe, you know, best overall, depending on how the other Warriors players have done. Problem being is out of 70 or 80 people, there's like 20 Warriors players. So if even half of them do well, there's no way I'm going to win best overall because of the scoring system, which I think I've talked about before. 
Um, maybe I'll do a summary video at, at the end for those that don't know. Um, however, I'm 4-0. There's probably three, four, or even five other Warriors players that were also four and zero going into games, going into game five. So it's unlikely that, you know, uh, I'm going to win best overall, but I could win best Warriors, which, which would be nice. Um, it may end up coming down to sort of uh, other sort of subsidiary scores. But that's game four. Hope you enjoyed it, uh, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Put in your comments. About any thoughts, any mistakes, etc. etc. And remember to follow me on Twitter at System War Games. Okay guys, peace out.